Good morning, Faith family and partners and online viewers. Welcome to the Faith Zone. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us all rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for connecting with our live stream worship experience this morning. We hope that this live stream service will be a blessing to you and your family. As you know, uh, the coronavirus is on the rise. Some say we're in the second wave of the virus, and we hope and pray that you will be smart and do the right thing, and that is to uh, wear your face mask when you go out, to practice physical distancing, and also wash your hands on a regular basis and whenever you need to. If we do that, that's going to help uh, lower the cases, but we pray that you would be smart as we go out and about as we're in the coronavirus and the flu season. So let's pray for those uh, in our state and in our nation and all of the, uh, uh, all of the states around our nation that's uh, dealing with this pandemic. And we pray that God would uh, give them the wisdom and that our health care professionals and the hospitals will be able to deal with those patients that are affected by this virus. But it's good to be alive and it's good to be in the land of the living. Before we begin our praise and worship this morning, let me share a scripture found in Psalm 106, verses 1, 2, and 3. It says, Praise the Lord. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for He is good, for His mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all His praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. Let's bow in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you for allowing us to come together on another Sunday to honor you, to worship you, to applaud you, and to just sing songs of praises to you. Bless our time together now and as we prepare for praise and worship. Let the words of our mouths, the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord, our strength and our redeemer, in Jesus' name, and every heart said amen. Let's prepare now for praise and worship. Good morning, FCOC. Come on and exalt the King of Kings with us today. You are worthy to be exalted, O oh God. You are greater. What are you turned into wine? Open the eyes of the blind. There's no one like you. None like you. Say into the darkness, into the darkness you shine. Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you Come on, won't you say this day Our God's greater Our God's stronger God, you are higher than any other Our God is healer Awesome magnify you today Jesus you're worthy of our praise water you turned into wine open the eyes of the blind there's no one like you none like you none like you say into this darkness Darkness you shine Out of the ashes we rise There's no one like you None like you, Jesus None like you
as we come to it, declare that you are great, you are mighty, you are awesome in this place. That nothing can come against us, your children, this morning. No weapon formed against us shall prosper while we stand in your love today, oh God. If you are for us, who can be against us? No matter where we find ourselves today, oh God, in the midst of a pandemic, we can raise up our banners and exalt your name for you are greater and higher than anything or any pandemic, oh God. Nothing will separate us from your love. God is for us, yes. Who can be against the children of the living God? Then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? And if our God is for us, then who could ever stop us? And if our God is with us, then what can stand against? and 
the lamb, the lion and the lamb. Won't you declare how great is our Good morning, FCOC partners and online viewers. Welcome to the Faith Zone. Thank you for taking time out to worship with us today. Please be sure to check us out on YouTube, Vimeo, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. If you want to participate in more engaging worship, go to our website at www dot faith christian outreach center dot org click on the online church and there you'll be able to chat with those that are online you'll get to learn to know more about our pastor wilbur w robinson and get to know those who labor among you if you would like to be part of the fcoc partners then go to our website click on the connect tab Fill out the Become a Partner form, submit it, and we'll definitely be contacting you. Thank you again for taking time to be part of our worship today. Continue to enjoy the Faith Zone, 
and be blessed. Good morning again, Faith family, partners, and online viewers. Just a few announcements. On the, our November accountability sessions will take place starting today. Today at 6 p.m., our men's session will begin. So please, men, make a note of that. That's this evening at 6 p.m. on our Uber Conference virtual platform. So please connect and let us engage and sharpen each other. Number two, a special thank you to Deacon Valerie Anderson for taking the lead and in coordinating our Marketplace Ministry uh, outreach last Saturday. The free saliva COVID-19 uh, test drew over 400 New Jersey residents. Uh, and a special thank you to Assemblywoman Linda Carter and the Union County Freeholders who provided the mobile unit as well as the staff to accommodate those who came out. Special thank you to our mayor, the Honorable Adrian Matt, for partnering with us. And also, uh, we want to thank Minister Darnell Tolliver for monitoring our building and ground. So a special thank you to everyone who played a part in our Marketplace Ministry on last Saturday as we accommodated over 400 New Jersey residents. And we hope to do it again. We hope to do it again. This Saturday, November 21st, at 10 a.m. at 10 a.m. this Saturday, our Beauty for Ashes Grief 
of Support Ministry will conduct a special session, Grief and the Holidays, Grief and the Holidays on our Zoom virtual platform. You see, the holidays can be challenging for many people uh, who, have, who have experienced grief. And so this workshop, this uh, session is designed just for you. So please spread the word. Uh, tell a family member or friend who might uh, benefit from this session. Information on how to register can be found on our church's website. Go to our homepage and click the resource tab and you'll get the information you need to register for this upcoming Saturday session. Well, it's time to give, FCLC. God has been good to us. He has blessed us, and He's put us in position to be a blessing. And we realize it's more blessed to give than to receive. So please be faithful in your giving. If you are watching this live stream, if you are a faith partner or an online viewer, and you would like to sow a seed, a financial seed to help us do ministry, you too can give at this time. If you're giving by way of technology, use our Givelify app. If you're mailing your check, mail your check to our church's address. We are very happy to receive your tithe and offering and your financial seed to further the work of the kingdom of God. Let's bow our heads in prayer and thank the Lord for allowing us to be able to give. Father, we thank you and we praise you for the opportunity to give. We realize it's more blessed to give than to receive. And so out of a happy, hilarious, and cheerful heart, we give, not grudgingly, not out of, nor out of necessity, but out of a cheerful heart. Bless every hand, every household that will give today. May they never lack no want for any good thing, for we declare today that the Lord is our shepherd. And to this end, we give you praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. And every heart said, Amen. mountain looked all around couldn't find nobody went down into the deepest valley looked all around down there couldn't find nobody I went across the deep blue sea couldn't find one to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy Nobody greater, nobody greater than you Searched all over, couldn't find nobody I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater Nobody greater, no, nobody greater than you I searched all over, couldn't find nobody I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody Nobody greater, nobody greater Nobody greater than you Nobody can heal Like you can Oh most holy one You are the great I am Awesome in all your ways And mighty is your hand you are he who carried out redemption's plan You are he who carried out redemption's plan Search all over, couldn't find nobody I looked high and low, still couldn't find nobody Nobody
Body great. Body greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than you. Search all over. Search all over. Couldn't find no. Couldn't find no God. I looked high and low. Nobody great, nobody greater than you. Come on, lift those hands for real in here. Come on, nobody greater, nobody greater, Jesus. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater, nobody greater. Nobody greater, no. Nobody greater than you. Now lift those hands, singers, and let's just give them the glory. Nobody greater. Nobody greater. Couldn't find nobody. Nobody greater. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater than you. I dare you lift your hands and say that with us. again. God has been good to each and every one of us, and we thank you for connecting with us this morning. We're going to pray. We're going to pray for uh, the second wave of COVID-19, those who are being affected. 
not only the individuals that are in the hospitals, but the hospitals, the staff, and first responders. So we're going to lift that up in prayer. And also we're going to lift up the election process. Uh, we are a divided nation, and uh, we're going to pray that God's intervention would, uh, would uh, take place so that our nation can come together, accept the ele election process, and those that the people voted for, and that uh, God would give them the grace and the wisdom to lead. So let's join our hearts in prayer. Father, we lift up our nation. We lift up those that are affected by this second wave of COVID-19 pandemic. We pray blessings upon everyone, that you would grant them patience, the patience, the strength, the wherewithal to deal, to cope from day to day this pandemic. We pray, Lord, for every family member that's affected by it, those who are in the hospitals at this time fighting for their lives, and then the healthcare workers who are ministering to them. We pray that you, you would give them the grace and the physical stamina to deal with the patients and the situation that they're faced with. So we pray, Lord, that as citizens of our nation, that we would be smart and wise and do the right thing and that we would follow the restrictions and protocols that has been put in place by our state government, by our local officials. So Lord, help us to be obedient to those that are in authority. And then we pray, Lord, for our president, President Donald Trump. We pray for his family. We pray, Lord, that you would touch his heart and help him to come to the realization that the people have voted the voices have been heard, and we pray that there will be a smooth transition of power. Uh, we pray, Lord, that for your divine intervention in our nation as people are divided. We pray that there will be healing, there will be unity, there will be understanding, and there will be collaboration among the Democrats and the Republicans. So, Lord, we pray for our future government. We pray for success. We pray, Lord, for your divine intervention. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Oh Lord, we pray that you would reign and rule in our lives, in our hearts, in our communities, in our cities, and in our nation. We look to you for help, for strength, and for guidance. So Lord, bless us all. We thank you for allowing us to be alive and in the land of the living. And so Lord, we worship you, we honor you, and we thank you for this time. Speak to our hearts now as we share a word. Help us, Lord, to remain grateful as we are in the season of thanksgiving. And then, Lord, help us to open up our hearts and our hands to those that are in need. We thank you and we praise you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're in our November sermon series. In our November sermon series, growing in gratitude as we're inching along, making our way as we celebrate Thanksgiving this month. But growing in gratitude ought to be a goal of each and every one of us, each and every day of our lives, that we want to become more uh, uh, thankful and that we would operate in a spirit of gratitude. So we are on lesson number three. Lesson three, guard your heart with gratitude. Guard your heart with gratitude. You see, it is so easy to be discontent. It is so easy to find fault. It is so easy to stare at what is wrong. Ungratefulness is just downright easy to be ungrateful. Many people, even though they are blessed, they are alive, they have not been affected by COVID-19, they are still ungrateful. They are still complaining. It's a blessing to be alive, and it is a blessing to be in the land of the living. And here's a quote, no one sees how much you do for them. They only see what you don't do. You may do a thousand things for an individual. You may do a thousand or a hundred things for your spouse. You may do a hundred things for your family member. But if you, if you forget to do one thing, that's the thing they will remember. And that's the thing they will get upset about. Just that one thing. Our scripture today is Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. 
Proverbs chapter 4, verse 23. It simply says, above all else. Above all else. Guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. So what does it mean to guard your heart? What does it mean to guard your heart? The concept of guarding our hearts comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 23 through 26, even though we're centering on verse 23. We are reminded of all the things that try to come against us, and guarding our hearts means being wise and discerning in our lives. Did you catch that? Guarding our hearts means to be wise and discerning concerning our lives. We need to do that. We need to be careful where we go. We need to be careful how we deal with life issues. We need to be careful how we deal with people. We need to be careful how we handle blessings. And so to guard our heart is to be wise and discerning in our lives. Guarding our heart means protecting ourselves as Christians from all the things that would come to harm us. There are so many things bombarding us, so many things bombarding us on a daily basis. And we need to deal with that. We need to handle that. We need to be able to deal with all these things that come to harm us. We have to overcome temptations every day. That's something that happens on a daily basis. Temptations on every hand. We need to find ways to overcome doubts that tend to creep in. We guard our hearts against all kinds of distractions from our faith. There are many things out there today that will distract your faith, that will distract what you believe and what you, uh, uh, and what you hold sacred and dear to your heart. And so we need to guard our hearts concerning all of these things. Our heart is fragile, and we must do what we can to guard it. Above all else, Whatever you have going on in your life, above all else, no matter what you're facing, above all else, guard your heart. Turn to someone and tell them, guard your heart. Guard your heart for everything you do flows from your heart. You might ask, what are the issues of life? What are the issues of life? Life issues are common problems, issues and crises that happen to normal people living normal lives. Managing relationships so that they are healthy and functional. Surviving disabilities, coping with grief and loss, and dealing with self-esteem issues. These are all the common issues of life. We all must daily ask ourselves, what's pouring out of the faucet of my heart? We must be diligent in guarding our hearts because the condition of our heart will affect everything from thoughts, actions, and behavior. Whatever it is that's pour, that is pouring out of our hearts, the question is, is it clean or dirty? Is it pleasing to God or pleasing to me? Is it of any benefit to my now and my future destination with Christ? Every action in life is produced by a seed of thought that takes root in the heart and is acted out in our conduct. What is pouring out of the faucet of your heart? An attitude to build up or to tear down? To hurt or to help? To take it one step further? Does the fountain of your heart flow with ingratitude? Or is it running over with gratitude and thanksgiving? What's working in your heart today? What's going on? What's pouring out of your heart? You, say, you see, each day we must get in the habit of monitoring our gratitude for our spiritual health and protection. You see, gratitude is immensely powerful. The more thankfulness is present in us, the less vulnerable we are to complain and engage in sinful acts. Thankfulness is one of the most powerful affections God has given us the capacity to experience. It is far stronger than lust or any bondage of, spiritual, of sinful pride. The more it grows in you, that's gratitude. The more it grows in you, the more spiritual health you will experience. And the less power sin will have over 
your life. Therefore, cultivating thankfulness should be one of our core strategies in helping each of us fight sin. The Apostle Paul encouraged the believer in Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, to be thankful. He simply says, be thankful. And I want to say to you this morning, no matter what you're doing and no matter what you have going on, be thankful. Be thankful that you're alive. Be thankful that you have a roof over your head. Be thankful that you have health and strength. Be thankful that you have, a, have money. Be thankful that you have a career, a job. Be thankful for your family. Be thankful for your church. Be thankful that you are not, you're not affected by COVID-19 pandemic. Just be thankful. Learn to be thankful. You see, thankful people are not only the most spiritually healthy and spiritually protected, but very often the happiest. Are you happy this morning? What thankfulness says about us? What does thankfulness say about you and I? How thankful we are reveal the health of our souls. Uh, when the Apostle Paul describes what our being filled with the Spirit looks like, he does not point to miraculous spiritual gifts. He points to thankfulness. In Ephesians chapter 5, verses 18 through 20, listen to what he says. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and, and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. Giving thanks always for everything. Giving thanks always for everything to God the Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many times in the Bible do we hear the call to give thanks and tell of his wonder, wondrous or wonderful deeds? Here are a few. Psalm 106 verse 1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. Psalm 105, verse 2, sing praise to him. Tell of all his wonderful acts. Colossians 3, 15, sing and make music in your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks to God the Father for everything. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, be joyful always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances. For this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Why the heavy emphasis on gratitude? It is a powerful and essential act of worship. You see, gratitude is an act of worship. Thankfulness is an act of worship. Gratitude sees the beauty and the goodness of God's faithfulness. Gratitude brings specific attention and praise to those very things. Even more, gratitude is both an indicator of your heart and a defender of your heart. It is an indicator of your heart and a defender of your heart. And that's why we so desperately need more of it. And here is the wondrous thing about it. Gratitude has a gravity to it. The more you do it, the more you see it. Gratitude, again, has a gravity to it. The more you do it, the more you see it. Uh, you see, God's goodness, kindness, and faithfulness is all around you. Have you looked around lately? God's goodness and God's kindness is all around us. David declared, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Goodness and kindness is all around us. And we need to locate it instead of complaining, instead of being filled with ingratitude, locate all of the kindness and goodness that God displays on a daily basis. It's found in people. It's found in nature. And it ought to be found in you. Yes, take a good look around you. So how do we become more grateful? We practice thanksgiving. That's the answer. So how do we become more grateful? We practice thanksgiving. You see, when you practice thanksgiving, you are building a wall of protection around your heart from the deceitfulness of the enemy. You are intentionally putting God's goodness, 
God's kindness and God's faithfulness at the forefront of your mind, which is an incredible, powerful deterrent. Yes, every day you ought to wake up thanking God. Let that be front and center. The old songwriter said, I woke up this morning with my mind stayed on Jesus. A matter of just recognizing that it's because of him. It is in him that I move, live, and have my being. Gratitude is hard work, but you and I must do it if we're going to be successful and live a life pleasing to the Lord. It does not just happen overnight. Gratitude is a habit you must train your heart to do each day in, in, in all circumstances. So this is the training ground. Every single day, God gives us the opportunity to guard our hearts from grumbling and complaining, to guard our hearts from, for, from, from acting out and, 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 and just being uh, ungrateful. So every day we have an opportunity to shape our hearts and fill it with thanksgiving. Open your eyes to God's blessings all around you. Gratitude does not just stop at what God has done in the past. It is instrumental in shaping how we perceive the future. If God has been good to me and if God has blessed me yesterday, God is still blessing me today and he's able to bless me on tomorrow. So I put my life in perspective. The God that I serve will never, never let me down. He's a God that I can always count on. Therefore, I'm in a constant attitude of gratitude and thanksgiving. And when we lose remembrance of what God has done, we lose confidence of what he will do. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. What he did on yesterday, he's capable of doing today, and he's capable of doing tomorrow. What he said on yesterday still stands today, and it will still stand tomorrow. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. In the book of Malachi, the Lord declares, I am the Lord thy God, and I change not. So we can always count on God. In Joshua chapter 4, verses 23 to 24, for the Lord your God dried up the Jordan before you until you had crossed over. The Lord your God did to the Jordan what he had done to the Red Sea when he dried it up before us until we had crossed over. He did this so that all the people of the earth might know that the hand of the Lord is powerful and so that you might always fear the Lord your God. He just keep on blessing us over and over and over again. What a mighty God we serve. Let me briefly share 10 benefits of giving God thanks, and that will help guard our hearts. Number one, gratitude glorifies God. Gratitude gives glory to God. This alone would be a reason to give thanks to God. Our gratitude glorifies God. God as we exalt not the gifts, but the giver. Gratitude helps us realize all that we have come from him. All that we have comes from him. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. And as God's grace reaches more and more people, there will be great thanksgiving and God will receive more and more glory. That's 1 Corinthians 4.15. Number two, gratitude helps us see God. It not only helps us glorify God, but it helps us see God. Gratitude opens our spiritual eyes. There is a beautiful cycle in giving God thanks. The more we thank him, the more we see him working in us and around us. Did you catch that? The more we thank him, the more we see him working in us and all around us. God never stops working. He's a way maker. He's a promise keeper. He's light in darkness. He never stops working. He's working right now. He's working on your behalf right now. You may be going through a situation. You may be facing a, a, a critical uh, a, a circumstance in your life. You may be facing a health challenge, a financial challenge, a career challenge, a relational challenge. But whatever it is, God is at work even right now. 
And that deserves, thank you, Lord, for working on my behalf. You see, gratitude helps to see God's presence, his personal care, and his perfect timing. James chapter 1, verses 16 and 17 says, Do not be deceived, my beloved brothers. Every good and perfect gift, did you catch that? Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Number three, gratitude puts us squarely in God's will. Gratitude puts us squarely in God's will. We don't have to make God's will out to be some big mystical plan when sometimes it is simple obedience. If we simply obey God, we will find ourselves following after him and we'll find ourselves in his perfect and divine will for our lives. And when we disobey God, then we are out of God's plan and out of God's will for our lives. Yes, God has a plan for our lives, but we must be obedient and walk and follow after him. And part of God's plan for us is to live out each day being thankful. Not just on the sunny days, but on the hard ones as well. 1 Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks in all circumstances. Did you catch that? Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. It is the will of God that every single day, no matter what's going on, that you render thanks to God. That you get up with a thankful heart. That you go throughout your day with a thankful heart. That before you lie down, you lie down with a thankful heart. Then when you get up the next day, the cycle continues. It is a constant daily giving of thanks to God. Number four, gratitude brings contentment. Gratitude brings contentment. It is said that gratitude makes what we have enough. If we are not grateful for what God has given us, getting more will not satisfy us either. It will not satisfy us either. Some of us are not even thankful for what we have. So, Pastor, just a little bit. Well, thank God for the little bit. Well, Pastor, it's, it's not enough. Thank God for what you do have. If you are thankful for what you do have, you'll find out that God will give you more. Because sometimes it's not more and more and more things it's being thankful for the things we have. Being thankful is the, is the key to contentment. Yes, 1 Timothy chapter 6, verses 6 to 8 says, Godliness with contentment is great gain. For we brought nothing into the world, and neither can we carry anything out of it but if we have food and clothing, are you listening? But if we have food and clothing, some people don't have that. But if we have food and clothing, we will be content with these. Be happy that you're alive. Be happy that you have a roof over your head. Be happy that you have clothes on your back. Be happy that you can eat two or three meals. Be happy that you can drive to work. Be happy for the things you have. Be content. Stop trying to get more and more and more. More and more will just become a distraction for many people. But be satisfied where you are and how God is blessing you. Number five, gratitude deepens faith. Gratitude deepens faith. Keeping a record of God's past faithfulness is faith boost when we face new difficulties. It is a faith boost. Boost when I know what God did yesterday. It boosts my faith to know that whatever I'm facing today, God can handle this. Gratitude deepens faith. So when I'm facing a new difficulty, if he did it before, he can do it again. Can you say that? If he, if God has, if, if he has shown out before, he can show out again. If he did it before, he can do it again. Believe it or not, on your hardest days and in the worst circumstance, God is still at work. God's record of faithfulness is 100. Not 95, not 85, not 99 and a half, but God's faithfulness to you and I is always 100. He is the true 
and faithful God. And that is why God commanded Israel to remember his great deeds. Psalm 136 verse 1, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His love endures forever. Did you catch that? His love endures forever. As long as I live on this earth, God's love will be there. His love is from everlasting to everlasting. God does not change. His love is unconditional. And his love and his mercies endure forever. Number six, gratitude leads to joy. Gratitude leads to joy. The overflow of gratitude is joy. The overflow of gratitude is joy. Realizing God's abundant goodness, even in, in the, in the uh, hard times of life, is a gateway for joy. Psalm 126 shows this so clearly as the Hebrew exile sang the thanks to God for bringing them back to Israel. Psalm 126 verses 1, 2, and 3 says, When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dreamed. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues with songs of joy. The Lord has done great things for us, and we are filled with joy. You ought to say that and tell somebody, and you ought to text somebody. The Lord has done great things for us, therefore my heart is filled with joy. The Lord has done great things for me, therefore my heart is filled with joy. Gratitude leads to joy. Number seven, gratitude defies Satan's lies. Gratitude defies Satan's lies. He whispers that God is not good, that he is withholding good from us. God is not withholding anything from us. But his schemes, as old as the Garden of Eden, where he questioned Eve, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? When Eve responded, only the tree of good and evil was off limits. Satan suggested God was keeping good from them. He says, you will not certainly die. For God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be open and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. True gratitude for God and the abundance he gives protects us from caving to the enemy's lies. Do not allow the enemy to lie to you today. Do not allow the enemy to tell you to whisper in your ear that God is withholding things from you, that God is angry with you, that God is out to see you fail. God loves you and God is for you. Psalm 84 verse 11 says, no good thing. Did you catch that? No good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Number eight, gratitude guards against envy. Gratitude guards against envy. Envy makes us want what someone else has. I mean, we deserve it. Gratitude makes us realize God has given us far more than we deserve. Because there's enough for, every, for everyone, we can cheer rather than compare. If God is blessing your fellow man, if God is blessing your brother or sister, you ought to cheer for them. You ought to say, God bless you. I'm happy for you, brother. I'm glad that God has come through for you. I'm glad that God healed your body. I'm glad that God has opened a new door of opportunities. I'm glad that God's blessing your life. We ought not to compare our lives with someone else's life, but we ought to cheer them on and say, God bless you, brother. I'm happy for you. A heart wholly grateful has no room left for envy. Psalm 138 verse 1, I will give you thanks with all my heart. Number nine, gratitude helps us live in the present. Gratitude helps us live in the present. Wherever you are, be all there. Wherever you are, be all there. But that is difficult to do in the worry and rush of life. Gratitude helps. Gratitude opens our eyes to the simple beauty of ordinary days and ordinary things. It lets us see the day and this moment as a gift. 
right now. Thank God for your right now. Thank God for this moment. Thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for this day. Be in the moment of this day. Allow thanksgiving to run off your lips for this day, for this very hour, for this moment. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Be glad in today. Don't, have, don't let the worries of tomorrow sadden your heart and bring disappointment and grumbling and complaining. This is the day. This is the hour. This is the time. This is the moment that the Lord has made. And I shall rejoice and be glad in it. Finally, gratitude is a testimony. Gratitude is a testimony. When we, get, when we thank God openly and acknowledge what he has done for us, we proclaim a personal caring God to the world around us. The world needs to know that God is here. The world needs to know that God is near. God is nigh. The world needs to know that God has not left us, that the whole world is in his hand, that God is sovereign, that God is in control, that God is still healing, that God is still blessing. The world needs to know. So why don't you share your testimony? Your testimony of gratitude that I thank God. Give God the credit. Lift him up. We show that contentment and peace comes not from what we have, but what we know. And what I know about God and who he is brings contentment and great joy to my life. Psalm 105 verse 1 simply says, give thanks to the Lord. Proclaim his greatness. Did you catch that? Give thanks to the Lord. Proclaim his greatness. Why don't you put that on your calendar this week? That this week, every day this week, I'm going to proclaim the greatness of God. For our God is great. Our God is awesome. Let the whole world know what he has done, the psalmist declared. Let everybody know what God has done. Let the Jew and the Gentile, let the saint and the sinner, let everybody know what great, what a great God you serve. I'm closing. There's an old song we used to sing. He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. I cannot tell it all. He washed my sins away. I cannot tell it all. He, he walks and talks with me. I cannot tell it all. He gives me victory. I cannot tell it all. Well, I encourage you today, if you can't tell it all, tell what you can tell. Turn this on and tell them that. Tell what you can tell. Since you cannot tell it all, tell what you can tell. Say what you can say. Shout out what you can shout. Let the whole world know. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he has been good to you, say so. If he has healed your body, say so. If he walks and talks with you, say so. If you have experienced the Lord's hand and victory, say so. It's time for us to say so. In a divided world, in a mean world, in an angry world, light up your world with joy. Light up your world with thanksgiving. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If he saved your soul, say so. It's time for us to tell what we can tell. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word today. I bless you and I praise you. And teach us how to guard our hearts with gratitude. We pray, Lord, that as we guard our hearts with gratitude, we will keep out fear. We will keep out doubt. We will keep out the lies of the enemy. So teach us to be thankful. Teach us to be grateful, and in doing so, we are guarding our hearts. We thank and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're watching this live stream service and you have not given your life to the Lord, and you're allowing everything, every dart of the enemy to invade your space, your place, your heart, that doesn't have to happen. You can give your life to Jesus. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, there's a way out. Jesus declared, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. And no man comes to the Father but by me. Right where you are, you can pray, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Live your life in me. I am a sinner in need of a Savior. 
I believe you died on the cross for my sins. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my life. I give you my past. I give you all of my sins. Wash me thoroughly in your blood. I believe you died on the cross. You rose on the third day and you're coming back again. Lord Jesus, accept me the way I am. And if you have prayed, inviting the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart, to live his life in you, give us a call. Send us an email. Let us know that you have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And we will get in contact with you to help you in your new journey and in your new walk with the Lord. Before we go, men's accountability session this evening at 6 p.m. on our Uber conference virtual platform. So men, don't forget to uh, connect this evening. Join me Wednesday, live stream Bible study, 7.30 p.m. Our monthly theme, avoiding toxic talk, avoiding toxic talk. And our lesson theme for this Wednesday will be, should professing Christians use profanity? Should professing Christians use profanity? So please uh, join us this Wednesday at 7.30 p.m. Let's close out with a benediction. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace in your going out and in your coming in. This is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. And until next time, be safe and be well.